Go ahead, Danny. Okay, so thank you for the opportunity to give a talk here. Uh, so I will uh, start with uh, motivation for quantum computing. Then I will introduce uh, tensor lattice field theory, which is a, a new tool that uh, helps formulating uh, field theory in a way that is suitable for quantum computing. I will briefly address the question of symmetry breaking and truncations. And then I will uh, use a simple model, which is uh, the compact abelian X model. So it's a, a scalar electrodynamics, if you want. And then I will discuss the idea of uh, doing uh, quantum simulation with the uh, Rydberg atoms in uh, the next uh, few months. So, uh, Monte Carlo method uh, so apply very nicely to uh, lattice quantum chromodynamics and extension. And so we had a very nice talk by Anna about model beyond the standard model. But so all the success come from uh, importance uh, sampling and uh, Euclid, the use of uh, Euclidean time. And uh, so the, the progress in the field have been uh, amazing in the last 40 years. So it went from order of magnitude estimate to uh, prediction that are within uh, uh, one or two percent. And uh, now people are talking about electromagnetic correction, isospin breaking correction. So it's uh, uh, amazing what has been done with uh, that method, but it's not efficient when it comes to real time evolution. Uh, because Danny, can you put it in full presentation mode so we get the full screen? Let's see. Ah, let's see. Is that good? Uh, we're waiting to see it. Yes, now it's good. Thank you. We're good. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, can you see the, the whole screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, so yeah. So the method are not effective. Uh, important sampling method are not effective to deal with a real time evolution, and so the hope is that we could use quantum computer, so quantum device that can uh, evolve in a in, in the way the same way as we want to evolve the theoretical model, and that they could uh, offer new way to deal with the real time uh, evolution. And so as people did in the initial development of uh, lattice gauge theory, we have to start with a simple model and follow the, what I call the Kogut sequence. So you go from the Ising model to uh, in two dimension to model with continuous symmetry, model in two plus one dimension and uh, hoping to get to QCD within uh, 10 or 20 years. And uh, so the uh, quantum industry is developing uh, fast. So this is still very primitive, but so it's basically, uh, I feel like we are at the same stage as when Mike Kreutz started lattice gauge theory on the three by three by three by three. <laughs> uh, lattice and uh, so we have to use the machine that are available demonstrate that they get better and uh, uh, work on the optimization of the uh, formulation so uh, now a long-term goal is to do jet physics uh, with a quantum computer so if you look at the current uh, state of uh, uh, analysis in uh, 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 collider physics, you need to use a PTR or Erwig or other uh, simulation uh, software. And so it is based on uh, perturbative QCD for some part, but it is it has fragmentation uh, model that are not a initial. And so the goal is to try to replace this part with something that could be uh, performed by a quantum computer. Now, to 
uh, do quantum computing, we need to discretize everything. So we know how to discretize space. We have learned this from uh, lattice gauge theory, but we also need to discretize the field integration. And then, so I will advocate uh, tensor methods. There are many uh, other methods. And so you can look in the recent snow mass review for other methods, but I will emphasize the tensor reform relation here. And so it's based on the character expansion. And so a, an example of character expansion is just the Fourier series. If your fields are uh, compact, uh, like compact gauge, compact uh, U1 gauge field. And by using this, the partition function becomes a discrete sum of a contracted tensor. And so the advantage is that the the hard integrals are done exactly, so you don't need to uh, uh, do some some kind of a Gaussian quadrature or anything. So the the integrals are done, so they are Bessel or Maxwell function, and the field integration becomes trivial. It provides delta function that encode the symmetries. So when you have continuous field variable, these sums are infinite. So uh, for practical purpose, you need to truncate. The nice thing is that the uh, symmetries are encoded in the Kronecker delta. And so the truncation do not break the, the symmetries. And another uh, very nice as uh, aspect of the formalism is that you can go from the uh, Lagrangian formal, formulation that is used by lattice gauge theorists and Monte Carlo and connect smoothly to the Hamiltonian formalism by uh, cranking up the, the beta in the time direction. And so uh, I refer to a recent uh, review of modern physics and a book that uh, we have written as an introduction to the uh, topic. And so uh, you can see that we follow basically the Kogut uh, sequence. And so uh, hopefully it will be developed from a classical point of view and from a quantum point of view uh, simultaneously. Uh, to give you just a simple example of uh, a tensor reformulation, that I can take the O2 model. So this is just the Ising model, but with a spin on a, a circle, so it's a planar, sp planar spin model. So the uh, scalar product uh, between the neighboring field is just the cosine of the difference of the angle. And so you can uh, expand the Boltzmann weight using non-function, which are here the Bessel function. And then after this expansion, the, you can trivially integrate over the, the field, so you and uh, you get uh, Kronecker delta, and so the non-trivial integration are carried into this uh, Bessel function that you can uh, uh, you can use as an input to the way you formulate the, the theory. And so the idea is to replace the path integral over continuous variable by a sum over indices, and so graphically, so you have the the phi at the uh, lattice side and you replace them by quantum number at the links. And so it's very nice to do uh, uh, coarse graining because you can separate uh, degrees of freedom that are integrated and those that are kept uh, constant. Now you can uh, make a gauge version of this, which is the abelianics model. And uh, so you just add a gauge field in the, the gradient and you put a plaquette term. So it has the usual uh, local gauge invariance with the gradient replaced by a discrete gradient on the lattice. And phi is just the number Goldstone mode. The X mode has been uh, uh, decoupled. So it, the, the, the hard mode have been made uh, very hard. And so they are not present in this model despite the name abelian, compact abelian X mode. Then you do the uh, character expansion. And so you get a certain number of uh, selection rule. The first one, when you integrate over the matter field is just the equivalent of d mu j mu is zero. And then when you integrate over the 
uh, gauge field, you get something that is the uh, analog of uh, d mu f mu nu equal j nu. And the second one imply the first one just as in, in the, the, the continuous case. So the, uh, the, the, the matter field quantum number are completely determined by the gauge quantum number. So it's the, what you are familiar with that in the unitary gauge, the uh, scalar, uh, these are PDFs. And I will not do that in detail, but if the civilized version of the uh, selection rule for the gauge field is just uh, Maxwell equations. Now you can put this in a graphical way. So you have a tensor associated with the plaquette. So they carry a single uh, plaquette quantum number. And then you have connection uh, between the plaquettes that are just a, a delta function for the pure gauge. And uh, for the uh, abelian X model, you have arbitrary charge here that are just the uh, divergence uh, of the electric field. And the in the two plus one dimension, so you have similar thing, except now we have uh, four legs coming out of the links. And so the uh, so if you have the the time links, this is the go slow. And uh, if you have the space link, this is just the connection between the time derivative of the electric field and the curl of the magnetic field. And so you can uh, build up a transfer matrix like a lasagna using uh, the electric layer, which are in between the, uh, the, the time slice and then the magnetic layer, which are at the time slice. And you can take the time uh, continuum limit. And so the nice thing about this approach is that the, the tensor are uh, com computational building blocks. So the partition function are trace of product of tensor. Observable can be calculated by introducing uh, impure tensor like uh, for field insertion. They are local, they block uh, in the local way, they have all the information about the symmetries and the dimension. And uh, so they have a nice uh, coarse graining. Uh, and of course, any practical implementation re required truncation, but uh, as I, I say, it respect the symmetries. And uh, thinking about the flow in the space of tensor is much more easy than uh, enumerating uh, interaction. And also there is a basically a transparent connection between tensor and the quantum circuit. The, the Noether theorem generalized in a very nice way uh, that is for every uh, symmetry, there is a tensor redundancy. And this applies in a uniform way for global, local, continuous and the discrete abelian symmetries. There are subtle aspects of the uh, truncation that they can, uh, so they respect the symmetry, but the type of phase transition that you have can be sensitive to uh, the truncation. And so there is an example that was uh, found by Jin Zhang that if you uh, take the O2 model in the charge representation, when you take the spin one, there is a phase transition with an additional uh, symmetry that uh, it was not expected. And so this is a booming uh, topics of research. And I just uh, mentioned a few uh, direction like FIFO, supersymmetry, finite density, uh, procedure that can be used in IO dimensions, stringer model, gravity. Carol symmetry in the cold and dense matter. And so I apologize for the incomplete list, but there is a white paper for snow mass and the review of modern physics that I mentioned for more reference. This is also a list of people from who I have learned and uh, some review about uh, tensor uh, method that uh, where you can find all the relevant reference. 
So now I will switch to the uh, uh, Hamiltonian formulation and the question of simulation. So if you take the uh, time continuum limit in one plus one dimension, so you have an electric field square term, you have a charge term. So the, uh, this is a divergence. So this is a charge square. And then there is the, the current, so that uh, the, the so they have a term that induce a change in the Plaquette uh, quantum number. So these U plus uh, and U minus uh, change the electric quantum number by plus or minus one. And so in the practice, we will just uh, apply a truncation. So assume that the U plus on a uh, maximal uh, spin uh, is a zero. And so here I will mostly focus on the spin one truncation and a little bit on the mention the spin two. And uh, so, and again, you see that this term is uh, the, the scalar term, but it is depends only on the uh, gauge quantum number. So this is a very easy model because Gauss law is uh, automatic. So you the the uh, you can take any uh, gauge configuration and it dictates the the scalar quantum number and there are no limitation in the occupation. So it's very easy. It has uh, kind of a nice uh, behavior. So I just took an example. So if you take uh, just <laughs> uh, here I have uh, five uh, plaquettes, and so I have four position for the charge. I put a uh, electric field here. So you, uh, this is uh, m equal one uh, surrounded by m equal zero, and so there is a charge minus one here and a charge plus one here. And so when x uh, is zero, so x is just this term that. Uh, uh, raise or lower the electric quantum number. Nothing changed, of course, but then when you crank up uh, X, you start uh, uh, propagating the gauge field uh, like on a, on a cone. And when you increase X, it uh, propagates faster and faster. So I control the, uh, the speed of uh, propagation. You, so this is a case where the gauge the gauge coupling and the matter coupling are the same. You can take limits where the gauge coupling is much larger. Then uh, it's very hard to move the, 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 the pair. So it, it stays uh, just where it was. Uh, it can flip. Uh, so here uh, you have uh, L equal uh, minus one that start contributing in the important way. The opposite limit, you have a large, uh, so it's uh, costly to uh, create more pair. So you tend to have a, a long uh, flux tube so that it's a, a rich uh, dynamics. And so uh, uh, we want to explore it with a quantum a simulator. Uh, the first proposal that we had was to use an optical lattice with a direction that represent the spin uh, quantum number. So this is uh, a proposal with uh, Johannes Zayer, who is in the Emmanuel Bloch uh, group at uh, Garching. And so the spin uh, degrees of freedom here is a spin two. Uh, so, the, uh, so you have a, a ladder and you have one a cold atom that can uh, tunnel in the vertical direction, but not in the horizontal direction. And so you can manufacture uh, the, all the interactions that you have in the model just by tunneling a uh, Rydberg interaction and the curvature of the, the potential. Now, doing this experiment is very complicated and very long, but uh, uh, more recently, uh, there was the possibility of building uh, uh, array of Rydberg atoms that were developed in the Michalukin uh, group. And so here, the, the, the lead 
of the experiment was uh, Alex Kisling, who just uh, started a company <laughs> uh, called Quera. And uh, so you can uh, take uh, atom, uh, the uh, rubidium atom, and so they can be e either in the ground state or in uh, an excited uh, Rydberg state, and uh, they cannot be. So, so when you are in a high Rydberg state, there's the atom becomes much larger, so they cannot be uh, too close to each other when they are in the Rydberg state, and so that pro that generates a repulsive uh, interaction that. Uh, create some blockade. And that uh, trick was uh, exploited to uh, build spin representation, not with a single atom on the run, but with uh, a bunch of atoms that where only one can be in the uh, Hitberg uh, excited states. And uh, so the graphically, the uh, I, so there are two proposals. One is to have spin one with uh, two legs. So when it's uh, up, it's plus one. When it's down, it's minus one. And when there's nothing, it's uh, m equals zero. The uh, doubly occupied, uh, so with two Rydberg is a very heavy state that is suppressed. And then you can have the same idea, but with three legs, so this is plus one, zero, and then minus one. Now in practice, you, uh, so you can look in the, the paper here, but uh, you have to stagger the interpretation of the M equal plus or minus one. Uh, and so the, the Hamiltonian is very simple. So you have a Rabbit term that uh, flips the Rydberg and the ground states. You have uh, like a chemical potential and then the repulsive, uh, uh, repulsive one over R6 interaction. And uh, so I have done some uh, matching, for instance, the two uh, atom representation of spin one is extremely easy with one side. With uh, three, uh, atom, it's uh, more complicated because it uh, relies more on the uh, degenerate perturbative uh, expansion. So here I can do only, uh, it's easy to do only for special value of the coupling. And uh, so now the nice thing is that we will be able to build these object uh, in a few microseconds <laughs> with the a company called uh, Quera. And so uh, the matching that I showed between the, the target model, which is the continuous line and the simulated uh, evolution, which are the symbol could be performed by tuning these uh, three parameters of the, 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 of the experiment. And uh, so the, the plan is to, so it, it should be available on the Amazon web service, maybe in October. So the day it comes out, the first thing I try to study a bunch of uh, pairs of Wittenberg atoms, so that like the one site uh, system. And so have them separated so you can build a lot of uh, statistics. And then uh, later you can uh, then have nearest neighbor interaction and put them closer. And so it has a very rich uh, uh, phase diagram. And uh, so uh, Sergio Cantu uh, say that we will be able to do that uh, in a few weeks, so he has uh, set up the initial state for the uh, toad experiment that I mentioned. And uh, so the phase diagram is extremely rich. So you have here the chemical potential, uh, which is in the, the Rydberg atom lingo, this is the detuning, and then this is the Rabi frequency. So you can tune the 
the detuning with at fixed Rabi frequency, and you can uh, change the spacing between the atoms. And so here, this is with an aspect ratio of a two. So the the dx is half of the dy. So by uh, putting the atoms closer together, you get uh, a blockade. So you, uh, you can uh, so you can not have. So you have three sides where you can only have one in the Rydberg. So you get a z3, and then you go up. You get a z4. I don't know where the Z5, so it seems like it, uh, it's, it's a never there, but you have a Z6 phase. So this is a, a phase diagram made by Jin Zhang. And so this, the, the behavior of the phase transition in these regions is extraordinarily rich. And uh, uh, so there will be a paper by Jin pretty soon with uh, experimental uh, hopefully confirmation of the DMRG calculation that he has done. And uh, before concluding, I would like to thank uh, all my friends in the QLAT that uh, have uh, helped us develop uh, the, these things. So we have Michigan State, uh, UCSB, BU, Syracuse, uh, Maryland, and uh, so in conclusion, uh, tensor lattice field theory is a very generic tool that uh, you can use to discretize part integral. And it, it is a basic formulation for quantum computing and it applies to most uh, lattice model. It's gauge invariant. You can truncate without breaking the symmetries. Then we have proposed a uh, ladder shaped configurable array of Rydberg atom with two and three atoms for a single spin one. And uh, so we are extending in the spatial dimension. So the matching between the simulator and the target should be understood in a continuum limit rather than in a, a particular uh, uh, for a particular lattice action. Uh, approximate implementation are playing with the near-term technology, and so we are uh, weeks away from that. The simulator have very interesting features that are beyond the uh, target model, and so that is uh, also something uh, that has been uh, found in the quantum link approach that I have not discussed here, and so the connection with the quantum link approach has to be studied, and so thank you for listening. Thank you, Yannick. Uh, any questions? Yeah, very, very nice. But as you know, um, Simon Catterall, my student, and I'm blanking out on his student name, which is- uh, Goksu. Yeah, Goksu. Right, thank you. Are looking at uh, anti de Sitter space simulations, uh, ADS-2 first and then ADS-3. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether we can get them to run that, but I have the advantage that I can take my bicycle across the river. It's about- Five minutes from my house, uh -huh. and yep. uh, so I don't have to wait to get the, it on the web. But um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think there could be two ways to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one way is uh, so you you can use the uh, the the, the point carré representation that you use. Mm -hmm. It would require to have a, a tuning of the. Uh, <laughs> Local tuning of the parameter in a in a way that is radius dependent. Right. In fact, I mean the simplest model is obviously what you try is it's just a one dimensional array, and it's really just the quantum icing model. Except as you say, we want the um, strength of couplings between them to vary from the infrared to the ultraviolet. And uh, uh -huh. we, we already have a Python code which is doing this classically, so <laughs> we'll know what the mm -hmm. answer is. But the question is, um, do you, I mean, I have to talk to them. I'm planning to do this as soon as I get back, but whether they can do some spacing so that we can get a variable coupling between the uh, icing spins. That's the first problem. Yeah, uh, so they are aiming at uh, uh, complete uh, local control of the 
the, the parameter. So, so we can that, put a kind of warping into it. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, so maybe, so, so I, I, I'm thinking about the, the, the point carry disk. So you, you could have, uh, for instance, a detuning that changes with well, that's right. the, we, there's the radio. two Hamiltonians. One is yeah. the sort of crazy strip thing, which is ADS2, but then the kind of thing that uh, on the disk, which is also Simon has done, where you do a, a um, triangulation of the disk, but it's still a Hamiltonian, so, it, so it's really ADS3, right? Because it's a disk of operators, and then it's ADS3. Um, and those models, certainly we can write down. The question is whether we can get this variable coupling across. Well, actually the disk is harder because it can't be a, a regular array. It can't be a triangular array. It has to be a seven or eight fold array. So I think this is very hard, but on the other hand, as usual, what we'll do is we'll find out what we can do and we'll do that instead. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So there is also another option that I've been thinking about is, yeah. uh, so for instance, if you have the hyperbolic space, uh, so the two-dimensional hyperbolic space, you could embed it in a three-dimension. <laughs> and so it's, it's a real hyperbola. And then it's a, it's a uniform in that, uh, say, if you use the so then, hyperbolic coordinates. Uh, but it's a three. Then, then they, you need, yeah. I mean, you mean that you mean they would literally make a, a, a warped uh, plane with their... Yeah, yeah. With their Anyway, we should get, we need all of the ideas we can, but um, yeah, yeah. So, as I say, uh, I'm really attracted by the fact that I can actually uh, visit them. Yeah, and that's way, right. Conversely, the, I mean, for everybody's knowledge, they have wonderfully smart people inside that are just eager oh, to yeah. reach out and help. Yeah. So this is really yeah. a fantastic uh, opportunity. And, uh, and uh, yeah. as you say, you can do it remotely, that's fine, but you know, they Zoom and they're very savvy. Yeah, and, um, and so they have a, a great website. They have developed a software that is called this, Blockade. It's an amazing team. They have a bunch of theorists that are doing yeah. our models. They have a bunch of software people that are making the software more flexible. Then they have three different systems and they have people with vacuum stuff. I mean, it's a really extraordinary uh, group. And, yeah. uh, but they're eager to find um, people to push their technology. It's amazing, actually. Yeah, and so they, the, we have talked to AWS, so it's going to be available online pretty soon. So you, right, you sure. can you can do your own, <laughs> your own, at least in two D. So so far. Yeah. So anyway, it looks great. I hope we. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Yannick. Uh, I'm the organizer of the session. If there's anyone else that wants to ask a question. No, I think we're going to give you a round of applause and then we'll chit chat. Okay, thank you.